Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a cinch waist dress. Always start by smoothing out as many wrinkles as you can in your project and kind of get a lay of the land and decide what you want to do. And for this one, I'm going to be making spirals on it. Now I'm using a tool to create the spiral, but if you don't have a tool, just go ahead and use your fingers and twist it up. So this is a microwave splatter guard and this particular model that I'm using is no longer available. So you're going to have to come up with something on your own. Anything flat with a hole in it will probably work. All it's doing is helping keeping the pleats down flat so they're nice and uniform and you get a pretty looking spiral. But like I said, if you don't have a tool, just go ahead and twist it up on your own and it should be just fine. Now the tool that I'm using in the center of the spiral is called the hemostat. I click it down on the first click because it does not need to be overly tight. You don't want to tear a hole in your project and also make sure that you don't press really hard into the table because you can poke right through and make a hole. So I go around and around until I have my spiral the way that I want it. I will unclick the hemostat, hold down the center of the spiral, and I will wiggle the hemostat out. Now everything is on fast forward a little bit so it looks kind of violent. I'm actually being really gentle with this. Because of the way this dress is designed, I decided I'm going to do two offset spirals. So you could call this a double spiral project. You could also call these vortex spirals because I'm going to scrunch up the rest of the material. When you make your tie dye, you can call your project whatever you want. So notice how I placed one of my favorite rubber bands around the first spiral. That's just gonna help keep it intact. Now this is where it's going to start to get a little bit tricky. It's not hard to do, but you just need to take your time. So in order to make the spiral at the bottom of the skirt, I'm going to have to take all of the project around and around. So again, I have this on fast forward. I really took my time to make sure not to mess up the first spiral that I made. So. I'm just gonna let you watch and see exactly what I did because this is what you're gonna have to do if you wanna make this dress. All right, now this next step I learned from watching Mio Faustino. He has a YouTube channel. I recommend that you check it out. He's got a lot of cool stuff. Make sure you click subscribe if you're over there. And if you're on Instagram, you can find him as Storage TD, TD for tie dye. So all these are are lids, and I got them off like nut containers from Costco. But if you don't have a Costco membership, use anything you want. I have found that I have started hoarding food containers and rubbish uh, because everything can be a tie-dye tool, right? Okay, so I've used the lid because that's the size that I want the spiral to be. Now I'm doing a tight scrunch on the rest of the dress. Super simple. And the lid, if you notice, I'm like pressing down kind of hard on the lid so that the spiral doesn't come undone and it works out perfectly. Round shaped containers are your friend when it comes to making tie dye. Now once I get it all scrunched up the way that I like it, I'm going to secure it by using rubber bands. You could use kite string, you could even use sinew which is a wax covered string, but for this project I don't want any white lines and I just find rubber bands to be quick and easy. I'm going to use my favorite rubber bands but the stretched out ones. So when I apply heat to them, they don't bounce back to their original size. They stay big, which is perfect for a larger project like this. I have an entire horde of rubber bands. And once you get into tie dyeing, and for those of you that have been tie dyeing for a while, I bet you have a bunch of rubber bands. You just wanna find the right tension. If your project is trying to roll up, curl up, taco up on you, you need to go 
bigger in the rubber band size. Too much tension is gonna make it collapse in on itself and you don't want that to happen. Now when I go to remove the lid, it pulls the spiral up with it and that's an oops, I didn't want that to happen. That's okay, don't panic, you don't have to start over, just kind of smoosh your spiral back down in there the way that you want it. And then I will know for next time and just be more careful. Just take your time. Using a washable marker, I mark out my pattern. I think this is Crazy Art brand. I get them at Walmart. Yeah, Crazy Art. And then Crayola also makes um, a washable marker, but make sure you're using washable markers. I have made the mistake of using regular pens before and thank goodness the dye covers it, but it doesn't wash out. These washable markers work perfectly. Now I am marking out the parameter of the spiral primarily just to keep myself on track. I can see where the spiral is, but it's kind of hard to show up on camera. I don't want to take my die any bigger than that little spiral that I created. Because once you open up your project, the spiral gets a lot bigger than it looks. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Now, this red thing that I'm putting on, those are silicone cake molds. And I got them from Amazon. And they're fantastic for an ice barrier. I definitely recommend them. They don't work for all projects, but uh, short projects that are only about an inch tall, they're amazing. So I have a link for them down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie-dye. So I recommend that you go down there and check that out, especially if you're brand new to tie-dyeing and you don't have a lot of tools yet. Everything I use is down there, so it makes it really easy for you to find what you need. I put the lids back on the spirals just to protect them while I'm sprinkling the scrunch portion of the dress. And I'm only going to use one color on the scrunch, Strong Navy. So if you're new to tie dyeing and ice dyeing, the fun part about ice dyeing is all the color splits. So when the ice hits the dye, it's going to break it down into its component colors. And for Strong Navy, that happens to be purple. It's a really pretty color and one of my go-tos for the navy blue. Um, if you don't have Strong Navy, I definitely recommend it. It's beautiful. And I'm using a funnel scoop that I got from www.shopboredomwithjen.com. She makes all of the cool tie-dye tools that I use, so definitely check her out. There is a link down below in the description box. Like I had mentioned, everything is down there. But at the end of the video, there will be a link on the screen. If you're using a phone, if you click it, it'll take you right over to the website as well. I love playing in the dye. Ice dyeing is my favorite thing to do. Liquid dyeing, not so much. I just love to sprinkle the dye powder on the project. And I also love to make spirals. And for those of you that have been around for all of my duration here, you guys know how much I am a rainbow fanatic. So for this dress, I'm just gonna make a classic rainbow. So if you're brand new to tie dyeing and ice dyeing, when you're sprinkling your dye powder on, on like on your little pie wedge, you wanna take it down into the center of the spiral. But when you get down into the very center, you want to sort of restrain the amount that you're putting down in there because if you put a whole bunch of each color right down in the very center, it's going to become or potentially become a muddy mess. So you bring it down into the center and then just kind of 
taper it down in there a little bit. You don't need a whole bunch, but you need enough to where you don't end up with a white center. I've made that mistake as well. So I learned by trial and error, and you will too. If you're brand new to tie dyeing and you just found my channel, hello, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Please click subscribe, leave a thumbs up on the video. It just helps the content get out there so more people can learn how to tie dye. And for those of you that have been with me for forever, thank you for staying with me and not leaving me while I took a break. I'm back, summertime is here, and I'm going to get busy tie dyeing and making videos again. So if you are brand new to tie dyeing, you may not know about this, but I have a Facebook group and we have over 5,000 members now, which just blows my mind. Um, a lot of amazing people, they are there. They will help answer questions and you know help you get going in the right direction. It's Belladonna Dyes Community Tie Dye Group. You just agree to the rules or answer a couple questions, whatever, and then we'll accept you in and then you can share your tie-dye with us. And unfortunately on YouTube, you can't share your projects with me, but over there in uh, Facebook, you can. So if you want me to see it, make sure that you take me and then I will get to see your work. And I look forward to it. One thing that is really important, you don't want to cross contaminate into your jars of dye. So for each jar, I'm using a new spoon. If you're brand new to tie dyeing and you haven't ordered any of your dye yet, I get it from Dharma Trading Company and other companies, but primarily from Dharma. I'm on the West Coast and they're closest to me. And these colors that I'm using on this rainbow are the classic rainbow colors and you can't go wrong by ordering them first. Uh, the primary colors are fuchsia red, lemon yellow, and turquoise. That's what the dye company uses to mix all of the colors. So if you start with those three colors, you cannot go wrong because you can make you can make any color you want out of it. And then the secondary colors being the deep orange, the bright green, and grape is just a really pretty purple. Even though the dress has been pre-soaked in the soda ash bucket prior to adding the dye to it, I give it a quick little sprinkle of soda ash just for good measure. I'm going to add quite a bit of ice to the project, so I wanna make sure that the pH stays up around 10.5 to 11. That way the Procyon dye can bond with the natural fibers for maximum vibrancy. Now I'm adding my ice and I'm starting by adding just regular ice cube tray ice. I got the trays up at the dollar store just over top of that spiral so the dye stays right where I want it. Then I'm going to backfill with my nugget ice. And I have the Frigidaire Gallery Nugget Ice Machine. And if you're gonna get one, make sure you get the second generation and it's called the Gallery. Do not buy the first generation. I've had one of those and in the very end, it became a problem. This new machine is amazing. And you can find some videos on my ice machines. If you go into the playlist of how to and tie dye tools, you can find all those videos down there. And I like to add enough ice to where the cake molds are just all filled up. And then you want to batch your project at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours. And I like to batch my projects for the full 48 hours. For the washout process, I start at my sink, but you can do it in your driveway, in your backyard, in the grass, wherever you wanna do it. For me, it's my sink. So I start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then I increase the water up too hot and that removes any unbonded dye. And so it can go down the drain instead of into my washing machine. And I'll rinse until the project, the water runs pretty much clear. Then I'll take it to my pre-filled hot water washing machine and I do hot water cycles using Kirillon, 
which is a professional textile detergent. And then I do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft, which is a professional fabric softener. And then I'll put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is, guys. Here's our cinch waist dress in our double spiral or vortex spiral, scrunch, whatever you want to call it, on Bella after it's been washed and dried. And I think it looks great. Now, Bella is a negative size zero in this dress. I think it's a 2XL. So it doesn't quite fit her, but you get the idea. So I think it turned out great. So remember what I said about the strong navy splitting down into a really pretty purple? Well, look at how beautiful that is. And then the vortex spiral just looks super cool. Quick and easy project, pretty dynamic results. I'm happy with it. It's a fun summertime dress. And did I forget to mention, um, I got this dress at Old Navy. Uh, Old Navy is pretty much all 100% cotton. So go up there and check it out and you're gonna find all kinds of cool things to tie dye. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.